One of the largest and most important components on a watch is actually the crystal. You have to look through it to see the time. Without it, we couldn't have a watertight, an airtight watch that we could also see the hands. When it comes to the crystal on a watch, there are some choices that you have as a watch buyer. And there's pros and there's cons to every different type of crystal. Whether it's an extremely hard crystal that is nearly impossible to scratch, or a very soft, maybe plastic or acrylic crystal that is very easy to scratch. Knowing the benefits of the different types of crystals will help you determine what kind of crystal is best for your watch. There are three main types of crystals that you'll find on a wristwatch. And there's another type of crystal that you'll typically only find on older vintage watches or pocket watches. The main three crystals that you're gonna find on watches today are going to be some sort of acrylic, possibly marketed as a hesalite crystal. You'll also find mineral glass crystals and sapphire crystals. Now on older pocket watches and some vintage watches, you'll find just regular glass crystals, which are similar to a mineral glass, but they're not as hard. Those crystals, you won't really find them on watches today, not on modern watches. The most common crystal you're gonna find on almost all watches is going to be a mineral crystal. Mineral crystal is a very hard glass crystal. And this mineral glass resists scratches. And it's also pretty good when it comes to resisting shattering. The upside for a mineral crystal is that it's relatively inexpensive for how durable it is. Things like Gorilla Glass, that would be in the mineral crystal category. A mineral crystal will oftentimes become scratched, but it's less likely that it will crack because it's softer than other crystals that are scratch resistant. So being relatively inexpensive and relatively strong are the pros for a mineral crystal. The cons for a mineral crystal are that they cannot be repaired. Once you get a scratch, you cannot polish the scratch off of the crystal. So the crystal needs to be replaced if you want to eliminate that scratch, which isn't such a big deal for some people. And usually the price of a watch that has a mineral crystal is gonna be a lower price with the intention that that watch will be replaced instead of being rebuilt and refurbished every few years. It's not really intended to be an heirloom watch. Now I mentioned not being able to polish a mineral crystal. And the reason I even bring that up is because the alternative or one of the alternatives to a mineral crystal is some sort of acrylic crystal. And that's something that is going to be like a plastic, which is soft. A plastic will scratch easily. The upside to an acrylic crystal is that you can very easily polish any scratch out of the crystal. They are also very resistant to shattering. The softer something is, the more it can absorb an impact instead of fracture. So if you look to older dive watches, older vintage Submariners or Omega Seamasters, these watches had acrylic crystals. And that was so they could take an impact 
and still remain water resistant. And if they were scratched on rocks while diving or on dive equipment, they could easily be polished out. There's a product called PolyWatch, which is very cheap and you can simply polish with a polishing cloth and some PolyWatch compound by hand the acrylic crystal that's on a watch. So easy to scratch, but easy to repair. They are also quite inexpensive. So the benefits of an acrylic crystal on a watch will be that they're unlikely to shatter from an impact. They're quite inexpensive to replace completely, and they're very easy to polish. The cons are that they scratch very easily. They could scratch from wearing a denim jacket and the cuff rubbing on the, the acrylic. So you have to be prepared and understand that you will have to polish that crystal pretty regularly to keep it nice and clear. What will be considered the most premium crystal option on a wristwatch is the sapphire crystal. Sapphire crystal is extremely hard. The only thing harder than a sapphire crystal is a diamond. Diamonds will scratch a sapphire crystal. That's how we polish sapphire crystals. They're polished to be clear with diamond tooling. This makes them very expensive because it's a very hard material and it's very hard to cut it, make sure that it's exactly within the tolerances to make a watertight seal and to polish the top and the bottom of the crystal into the exact shape and the clarity that's required. It's also a very large crystal. So the original piece of sapphire that the crystal is cut from and polished out of needs to be quite large. So on today's watches that are 42 millimeters or even 44 millimeters, the sapphire crystals are very large diameter. So they can be quite expensive. A very hard material also means that it can shatter. So if a watch with a sapphire crystal is dropped on a hard surface or has an impact with something that is also hard and will not absorb that impact, the crystal will shatter. And once it's shattered, there's no repairing it. Also, if you do manage to scratch a sapphire crystal, which sometimes happens if the sapphire crystal comes in contact with a brick or a stone wall, or possibly some sort of diamond-like stone, it's not possible to polish that scratch out. But it's also much less likely that you will end up scratching a sapphire crystal. So the pros for a sapphire crystal are that they're extremely hard, which means they're extremely hard to scratch, and they are also very clear. So legibility through a sapphire crystal is the best you'll get. The downside, they are fragile when it comes to shattering, and they cannot be repaired. There's no polishing option for a sapphire crystal. A sapphire crystal on a dive watch would be quite thick. It might have an inner and an outer dome, which means more grinding. And this means that you could have possibly a two or a $300 crystal. So if you do break it or you do scratch it, that will be added on to whatever service is required. If you crack the sapphire and you need to do a full service on the movement, in addition to a new sapphire, the repairs could get quite expensive. If you need a new mineral crystal, it's usually on a less expensive watch. Sometimes the repair of a crystal on a mineral crystal watch will actually become too expensive. And unless the watch has 
sentimental value, it's not worth repairing it. If you have a watch with an acrylic crystal, the acrylic crystal is unlikely to shatter. If it does, however, shatter, it's quite inexpensive to replace. Again, there is the labor, so it depends on the value of the watch and if there's any sentimental value, but an acrylic crystal might only cost $20, depending on the brand and the shape of the crystal. Now, all of those prices are just for the crystal themselves. It still requires a watchmaker to put that crystal in or potentially overhaul the watch itself and the movement. So that's not included in the price of that crystal. It might seem like a plastic or acrylic crystal is a weak option, but oftentimes they were found on some of the dive watches that were the best dive watches from the past. Things like Blancpain 50 Fathoms, Rolex Submariner, Omega Seamaster. These watches all used acrylic crystals and they were able to withstand the pressure. They would make them into a dome shape and that would help with the pressure. The older acrylic crystals also have the benefit of being part of the gasket system. So the crystal itself is what is sealing on the stainless steel part. So you do not have a separate gasket that could fail. It's one part. So by simply replacing the crystal, you can bring back the water resistance of the watch if you had an issue with the front crystal leaking. So it makes for a little bit of a simpler system. The crystal on a watch can tell you a lot about what that watch was designed for. Whether it was designed to last generations or if it was designed to be easily serviced, easily repaired, and knowing the difference between those crystals and what you want to get out of your watch, that'll help you make a decision on which watch to purchase and what kind of crystal you're looking for.